The intro song is like playing in my head right now. <laughs> the flames. <laughs> Action. Welcome back to Megan's channel. Dude, this is Universal Studios production. Damn. Well, this is a high production video. All right. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Rachel, uh, you want to you wanna introduce yourself? Okay. Hi, guys. Wait, look into the camera. Look into the camera. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. I'm Rachel, Rachel, Rachel Zhang, and I currently go to Cornell University and I'm a senior. <laughs> yeah, and I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. Cool. And I met Megan summer of 2018 when we were still young and carefree and Megan was still learning how to ride her orange NASA bike, carrying up the streets of NASA Ames. I was I was a great bike rider. I remember you walked your bike the first few times. Like I would walk it from the NASA lodge to the office where we both worked at, and then I'd be like, okay, this is the day. This is the day where I'm gonna ride my bike home. And then every time after work, I get too scared, so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna walk it home. Okay, so my first question for you. <laughs> Completely black. Just a prop. Expose. Hashtag fake YouTuber. <laughs> Scandal of 2020 isn't even coronavirus. It's that Megan uses a blank notebook when she's pretending to ask questions. <laughs> what is your honest opinion of my YouTube channel? <laughs> Non-scripted. Honestly, I think it's pretty fire. Like the editing is pretty good. And the creative props, I must say, they really are the true branding of the videos. And the intro, dude, that shit's fire. This, the intro song is like playing in my head right now. <laughs> so you don't think the sequence is too long or anything? I think it's a good length. I feel like it's gonna get obnoxious at some point. Like imagine if I keep making videos and just 200 videos later, it's just the same intro sequence. Yeah, that's the best part. <laughs> I know, not even the content. All right, so I'm gonna ask you a few questions about your experience at Cornell. What do you like slash not like about Cornell? There's a lot of more not like. Okay, what I don't like about it, it's like, it's the middle of nowhere, of course. Ithaca, upstate New York. So there isn't much to do. Dude, you guys at Berkeley don't appreciate your downtown. There's so much good food. But like here we have like, we have a couple Asian places but they're all kind of shitty. But at least there's Asian food. So there's that. And then I guess that can also be a pro since there's like not really much to do. You just like concentrate on your studies and it's very like Cornell centered Ithaca. So if you see a young person, you kind of assume they're from Cornell and it feels pretty safe. Like the buildings, none of the buildings are locked. So that was a surprise when I went to other universities. Like, wow, they lock their buildings. Yeah, the weather, super cold. It gets like below zero when you come back from winter break. So as a California girl, it's kind of a rough transition. I had to like buy winter coats and boots and everything. I, th I like the size actually, personally, since it's kind of big. It's like 14,000 people, but it's also not like too huge and I think it's pretty strong in STEM which is good for me because I'm an engineer but it also has like a lot of different other majors so it's like comprehensive university and there's like a lot of different types of people so it's nice. I guess we have this thing called slope day which is like end of spring semester and everyone like there's like a big concert and usually they like invite some pretty well-known artists like my first year we got Galantis but then that got cut short because there was a thunderstorm and they only played for 10 minutes before they were like bye and then second year we had Steve Aoki and that was fun but I uh and I didn't make it to the slope so <laughs> I didn't hear him play but and then the third year yeah, it's Corona, and I don't think we're getting something this year. But apparently we got like Chance the Rapper before he got famous or something. Yeah, Ithaca can be pretty too, because it's very nature-y. There's like a lot of waterfalls. Freshman year, you live on North Campus, and then you walk to class and you cross this bridge that overlooks this like waterfall every day. It's very scenic. Overall, I like it, but would I live in Ithaca again? No. All right, so you're majoring in mechanical engineering, but that wasn't your original major, right? Your original major was something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why'd you make the switch to mechanical engineering? Yeah, so at first I like applied as physics because I liked astrophysics or like space stuff. So I was like, 
physics. But then I came here and then I tried to take honors physics. Yeah, it was just very big brain. And I realized, wow, this is really hard. The physics majors are really smart. <laughs> I was like, what's the next thing that's closest to physics that can make money? Mechanical engineering, because it's like basically applied physics, right? So I switched majors and yeah, that's how I am where I am today. So do you not or do you regret switching to mechanical engineering? Yeah, but after a few years of mechanical engineering, I kind of realized I didn't really like mechanical engineering either. Whenever I tell people that, they're like, so why are you a mechie? I think I found kind of like what I'm interested in. Everything's okay. <laughs> What is that though? What, what do you like within mechanical engineering? So I'm interested in like controls and dynamics. And at NASA actually my boss did controls so that actually inspired me. Yeah, so that's actually how I first heard of controls. Like I didn't hear about controls before then. So thank you NASA. Wait, okay, like no joke. The stuff I do now isn't directly related to what I did at NASA um, during my internship, but it definitely changed the way I approach problems now. Damn NASA, changing young people's lives. Damn. Go NASA. Okay, so what kind of work do mechanical engineers do? Cause like, I, I feel like I've heard about mechanical engineers and I've had some friends who majored in it. And I know you guys build things that's mechanical of some sort, but I actually don't really know what you guys do. So there's like a few main subsets. So like there's mechanical design, which is like what you typically think of like a CADing computer model, 3D computer modeling, like parts and manufacturing them. The ones like fluids or heat transfer, for example, like combustion and like rocket propulsion, wind energy stuff. And then there's statics and mechanics, which it deals with like structures more. Analysis of like stress within building structures, like yeah, structures. And the last one is controls and dynamics, which is what I'm interested in. But it's like controlling stuff. It uses like physics, also like programming and also math. So what? What do the jobs for mechanical engineers look like? Are there jobs specific for each subcategory? Or like when employers hire, do they just look for someone who majored in mechanical engineering? Yeah, so basically if you come out with a bachelor's in me mechanical, you're like pretty prepared to do like any mechanical design field one. But usually for the other three, you kind of need to like specialize in your undergrad. So take like electives that are within that category. Usually they require like a higher degree, at least a master's. Okay, interesting. Nice. My next question I'm actually pretty interested in. Well, actually, of course I'm interested in all the questions I ask, <laughs> but you do research, right? I think you mentioned you do research. Can you describe your research? Yeah, I'm doing research right now in this lab called Autonomous Systems Laboratory. I do like, yeah, autonomous system stuff, which is like autonomous vehicles or multi-robot swarms. So it's kind of like both Mechie and CS stuff, which is cool. Now, in last semester, my project was building a simulator in ROS, which is robot operating systems, to simulate multi multiple robots and be able to have the user like specify like a point in like a floor plan or like a virtual world and have like the robot localize itself within that world and travel autonomously while avoiding obstacles in that world to, to the user selected point. Uh, what is the time commitment for research? I think last semester I spent like 10 hours a week. All right, the meat of this interview. You've done so many internships already, which is really good. And I feel like a lot of the questions I get also too is, how do you get an internship? And you've done three, right? So you've done NASA, which I know all about, General Atomics, and Uber. So you're a senior, you've gotten three internships. So that's one internship for a summer, which is like ideal. That's what every college student wants. So can you tell me a little bit about the work that you did in each internship? and what did you like about each one? Yeah, I think I liked all three of them and I'll just start chronologically. So NASA, of course, very fun internship. Got to meet lots of cool people, including one of Megan Lin. <laughs> yeah, the best part of NASA was definitely like the people. I think everyone was just like very chill and they like really supported like interns learning stuff. And it wasn't very glamorous, but it was fun because yeah, we got to talk a lot with other interns, like a lot of interns. And the full timers are pretty nice too. We had this dude named George and he let us just like hang out in his lab and like mess around with his 3D printer. Lulzbot was the name of the 3D printer. <laughs> Megan tried to print like her like honeycomb vessel thing, whatever thing, which was very cool. Dude, I totally forgot about that. It was a coronary stent. And at the time I was super into the honeycomb pattern because it was the pattern that NASA used for their airplanes. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna 3D print 
a coronary stent with a honeycomb pattern. I was super weird. I was so weird back then. I mean, I still am, but two years younger me was so like... Yeah, I just feel like everyone at NASA was very friendly. It was very chill internship and they give you pretty cool projects too. I worked like on this research team that was like researching this like new like kind of airplane flap design because like you know how for like regular commercial airplanes they have like one or two or like ten flaps along the wing that do like different purposes but they were like trying to design this continuous like flap along the trailing edge of the airplane wing that was like flexible they wanted to do this because they wanted to make the airplane wings lighter but that would cause like during flight what they call flutter of the, of the wings which is like like basically just like air disturbance would cause it to like flutter around which is bad so the flaps would help control like the shape of the wing and they were designing like control algorithms for the flaps to suppress the flutter and so my project was to create like the visualization of their control algorithms using like animation in MATLAB using like output of my mentor simulation and it takes like control inputs from like the different flaps, rudders, elevators on the tail and the physical like, response like the angle at which the airplanes would tilt. But it was a pretty cool project and I definitely learned a lot. And you got to meet me which is the best part. Highlight of my summer, Megan Lim. All right, second internship. So the second one was by this company called General Atomics Aeronautical Systems, and they make basically military drones that kill people, basically. But they also have peaceful ones, apparently, that like monitor forest fires. And the main usage is for surveillance and tactical missions, as they call it. Dude, you're working for the CIA or something. They also like produce like simulations for like the military dudes to like practice shooting people. <laughs> they don't like say like in like the simulations like the enemy has been neutralized they like have to install like missiles or like other like stuff on the drone according to whatever like the military wants and they call it loads instead of missiles so anyways yeah what i did was i was on the loads and dynamics team and what they basically do is they analyze the vibrations of the plane caused from like air turbulence or like the forces due to landing you know how like when there's vibrations of the same frequency it becomes very big vibration and you don't want that bad so it was like kind of similar to what i did at nasa so i think that's why i got the internship but i built a matlab tool that like generates like models of the airplane wings according to like user specified like geometry inputs or like mass specifications of the wings so basically you can make lots of preliminary designs of like wing properties and output like a model that you can run in nastran which is a finite element analysis program matlab matlab god over here <laughs> i actually don't know how to use matlab <laughs> Everyone calls it a fake language, which is true. I took one class at Berkeley where it says uh, in the syllabus, at the end of this course, the student will be proficient if not excellent in MATLAB. Yeah, I took that class and I am neither proficient nor excellent in MATLAB. <laughs> Did you get some like really cool, your housing for the summer was really cool, right? Yeah, they gave me like free housing, which was super nice. And it was like these like newly built apartments. Yeah, it was like super modern and they had like pools and they had like free gym classes. So I went to like yoga classes and they also had wine Wednesdays. Wait, weren't you under 21 then? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good company. It was a bit boring, not that social, so it's definitely not as fun as NASA, but good perks. And I wasn't there. If Megan was there, she could have lightened up my cubicle. Okay, so before your senior year, you interned at Uber, which is really cool. So what did you work on at Uber? And I'm sure you got perks from Uber <laughs> over those. Or maybe due to coronavirus, not as much. Oh, and this was a remote internship too, right? Okay, how did that, how did that change your internship experience? Yeah, so I just finished this internship like a week ago. Ago. It was at a subset of Uber, Uber ATG, and they work on autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars, which is super cool. And I was on the test engineering team. Oh yeah, so on their like next generation vehicle, they're trying to like incorporate more sensors on it. So currently they have like LiDAR and like have different cameras. So they want to incorporate like thermal camera sensors. My project was to create like a calibration board for these thermal cameras that are going to be incorporated on the next generation vehicle and also like write some scripts to to obtain the calibration of the camera basically. Yeah, it was a cool project because I kind of got to use like both my like mechanical engineering hardware background but also do like some software stuff. For perks, I was supposed to get free lunch and dinner every day but yeah, I wasn't in person so I couldn't go in but they still gave me my housing stipend which was nice. So 
it was like an extra thousand dollars a month. Oh, I got Uber credits every month. 266 Uber credits every month with 17% off. And I still have the 17% off for some reason, but I'm not gonna question it. Intern for life. At least for me, like the full-time engineers I worked with didn't treat me as intern. They kind of treated me like as just like another equal worker on their level, which was nice. So like I expected them to tell me what to do, but instead like I was telling them what I wanted them to do, which was really weird. What? What does that mean exactly? Yeah, because like I like designed the board and they have to manufacture it, right? And then so I couldn't like go in and tell the people to manufacture it and test it. So I had to get like another mechanical, full-time mechanical engineer to like get the stuff made and test it for me. Basically just like let me have ind independence on the project. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah, that they they treat you like regular employees and on the same level. They had like a professional like building a virtual event for us and they were like, yeah, it's okay to manage expectations sometimes. Manage expectations. Okay, I've never heard of that one, but I'll use it. I'll use that now. <laughs> manage expectations. All right, do you have anything you want to say as your closing words or just like anything? I would definitely say try to get like experience doing projects or research because I think companies really look for that like actual like hands-on experience in something and <clears throat> yeah, don't worry if you don't figure out what you want to do freshman or sophomore year. Everything works out in the end. So yeah, just explore what you like and have fun. That was deep. I like that. 